Today as Cork GEA sponsor, Sports Direct unveiled its Born to Play campaign for the championship. Sports Direct is calling on parents of newborn babies from across the Rebel County to register their baby's name to be in with a chance of featuring on Cork GEA's very own Walk of Fame around Parky Cueve and receive a Cork GEA kit. The Steps to Greatness celebrates all newborn babies born in Cork in summer 2021 who, like the greats who have gone before them, are born to play. Parents can register online and the names will be on display outside Parky Cueve ahead of Cork's championship openers this season. Delighted as part of this to welcome Cork footballer Brian Hurley to the show. Brian, how are you getting on? All is good on. Um, all is good. Everything's opening up slowly, so I'm a happy man. Um, GA is, is back and supporters are hopefully be coming back into the stadiums fairly soon, so I can't complain at all, to be honest. It's amazing, isn't it, that when we look back at, say, the last year for the Cork footballers, there's been so, so many amazing moments that have occurred independent of the supporters, as you say there, when Cork GA is so well known for its fans and its connection with the fans. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, you'd miss them around the stadiums, you know, um, especially probably last year's championship would have been great to have them, especially in the park two, to- two times and with no supporters. But um, yeah, look, you know, I suppose for such a big county, they do come in in their numbers, especially on championship day. And uh, hopefully, look, in the next few weeks and months, things will open up safely and we'll get it back, back on board with us. Are you the type of person who, once the, the ground gets hard and the summer gets going, that you love to have those chats in the street when people are stopping you, asking you, will you be Kerry this year and stuff like that? Yeah, look, it's all part of it, you know what I mean? Um, it's all part of it, but you'd have that every day down in West Cork. They just <laughs> live and die for it down there, to be honest. <laughs> and no matter what village you're walking through or driving through or what shop you're in. Um, but it, it's good, like, you know, it's great. And, you know, for the likes of them people too, they miss it as much as we did, so... Um, hopefully, look, you know, I was, I was looking at the Euros the last few nights and the last week and stuff, the crowds are, are nearly full capacity there. So hopefully, you know, back here sooner rather than later, we, we will have the crowds back. Fingers crossed. How did you feel that the league went for Cork this year for you? Yeah, look, it's one of the leagues, you know, it, it's a very tricky league, Division 2. Um, there's a fine line between getting promoted and relegated. Mm. And I suppose, look, we had... Essentially, we had three away games. Um, you know, uh, I think we underperformed for 30 minutes against, against Kildare. The cost us really, like, you know. Uh, and that was probably a big game at the start. Uh, we were away to Clare and, with, you know, for 10 minutes, the last, last 10 minutes, we were down to 14 men and we won by a point, which is a great win up there. Um, and, you know, in the last day, like, you know, we, we had a very good win against um, Westmead, but probably conceded a bit, a bit much at the back. So... You know, there's work to do and the next few weeks we'll be tightening in and that stuff. But uh, we're, we're looking forward to championship, you know. You know, who, who doesn't? We're about two and a half weeks out now, so it, it, it's all going blazing, really. There's been a real sense over the past couple of years, especially in championship, that this Cork team is ready to make a breakthrough in some capacity, whether it's Kerry last year or running the dubs close the summer previous. Is that your feeling as well? Yeah, I think we're improving and, uh, and we're building each game. Um you know, I was only thinking the other night we played the last 12 games we played competitively, we've won 10 of them, like, you know. Right. Um, so that's like, you know, there's probably a different perspective out there. We probably underperformed in three of them. Uh, uh, Ross Common in 2019 in the, in the Super 8, which was probably a small bit of a dead rubber game because, you know, we, we couldn't get through. Uh, it was definitely one of them. And, you know, Tipperary last year, we definitely didn't turn up in the day. And we got punished for it. And, you know, it's about 30 minutes against Ting. But other than that, like, we've been fairly solid. We've been loading a lot of new young fellas through. Likes of um, Sean Meehan is, is, is a massive um, leader. Or Shan Lee. Uh, they had massive games last year. And they'll be getting stronger this year. Then you have the likes of Colin Manny after a very, very good league. Okay, picked up a hamstring injury the last day. Next in, Dan O'Donnell started and man of the match. So, like, you know... I suppose you have a lot of the under twenties, you know, coming off the back of Ireland and all Ireland coming through now and putting pressure on the likes of the older fellas, which is great. Like you know, so um, no, I think we're building, and you know, you know, people's perception of there might be different, but we you know we can achieve it um, in house, and we're just looking forward to championship. What's the main emotion that comes to mind when you think about the twenty twenty championship? Um, <laughs> roller coaster, really. Yeah. It was like you know, um. 
look, it was a great win against Kerry. Look, uh, we, we kind of, we, we believed in ourselves. We knew we could do it, obviously, like, you know, but, um, and like, you know, I don't think we were going in cocky to a Munster final. Um, obviously, like, they're a good team and whatnot, but we, we just weren't at the race in the day, like, you know, looking back, our tackle count, our shot efficiency, even in, you know, in the first half, I two wides, second half, we still had chances to come back into the game. We just didn't take them. And if you, if you don't take them at this level, you'll be punished no matter who you play. And you've seen other shots throughout the county or throughout the country. And in similar positions, if you're not on, if you're not on it in the day, you'll be punished severely. And that, that's what happened to us. But overall, like, you know, um, it, it was so exciting to get back and, everything was 100 miles an hour the minute you, you got back in there, like, you know. Um, but, um, look, I think there's, look, we've we, we sat down, we, we, we've looked at our mistakes and we're trying to put them, implement them in this year's league and improve on that. And I suppose, reflecting back, like, personally, you have to look at yourself, like, you know what I mean? Why was your performance off? Could I improve better? And that's probably what a lot of I did during the lockdown this year when you're training on your own, the small things that you can improve on. Um, and bring it into this year's championship. And that's that's the name of the game. Like try to learn from your mistakes and bring it into a new one. But we're certainly looking forward to the championship and I think we're we're building nicely. It's interesting that you have that statistic ready to hand that you had two wides in the first half against Tip. Does that suggest that you've studied that closely and, and thought about it quite a, quite a lot? Yeah, I would be. I'd always study my game and where I can improve, where I can get better. Um, you know, and that that's just part of the, an intercounty player. I think every player is in the same boat. Uh you know, if, if I'd kicked him too, it could have been a different game. It could have been a different outcome at half time. Um, and, you know, you just analyse maybe one of them wasn't on, one of them was on, I was thinking. And um, that's just the way it is. Like, uh, you, like you'd you always look back, though, to, to improve, even if you had a good game, you know, not just in case you had a poor, uh, you had a poor day at the office. You'd always see to where small little things where you, you can get, you know, small fine margins to make you a better player. The thing is, we tend to sort of write a championship off and say that is 2020 story and it has no bearing on the next year, which is rarely the truth. I'd imagine that the positives from last year, which was beating Kerry for the first time in a long time, that changes the scope of what you can do this year completely, I'd imagine, Brian, that you'll have that confidence if the two of you meet again in, in the Munster Championship. Yeah, sure. Like, it's a funny old game. Like, you know, like we were in Division 3 last year. Um, we came through, obviously got promoted to Division Two, but like there was no talk of us. We were, you know, everyone was saying, you know, we know open championship and stuff. And next minute we we're the bees knees. The next day, everyone wants mm. to talk about us after, after the Kerry game, and whatnot. So like, it, you know, if you're not on your toes at this level, as I said, you'll be punished. Like you know, the the pace of the game has gone to a new level. The fitness, the physicality. Um, but if you don't turn up and perform on the day, um. You won't be at the races, like you know. So, like, what you need to do really is, like, you know, just make sure you're all of your own house in order and um, and bring it on the day. You've been speaking before about the about being written off before that game, and I think a lot of people say that after a game. I think you genuinely were written off before that Kerry game. I think it's it's absolutely fair to say it. Was there any specific piece or any specific person that said something that, that really pissed you off in the build-up to that game? Because I know Pat Spillane, for example, has been touted quite a bit in the aftermath of the game. Uh, yeah, look, you'd, you'd always have it. Like, you know, they're, they're, they're free to open the, to speak their own mind, like, you know. <laughs> but, um, no, obviously, you can add, you know, add fuel to the fire and whatnot, like, but, like, we genuinely had a, had a, had a game plan and, and a mindset and we brought it, but, like, you know, we got our pat in the back, what now? We didn't bring it to the Munster final, and that's that's where you need to focus in. It can't be just a, a one game wonder, like you know. So, look, it's it's a chance to rectify it in this year's championship, um, and that's 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 what we need to do, really. Like you know, and that's the you're only as good as your, your last game, as they say. And you know, it, in a strange way, the Munster final, you know, obviously it was a knockout championship, we didn't get a chance to rectify ourselves after it, so it's a long wait, and I'm sure. It's in the back of fellas' heads that they want to rectify it, and hopefully we can do that in the, in the coming weeks in championship. Yeah, it should be a cracking monster championship. Actually, when you look at the the, the side of the draw that, that everybody's on as well. Just uh, one other thing: how is the body holding up, uh, Brian? I mean, like obviously good. terrible injury a few years ago. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Um, fairness, no, I'm I'm actually very happy in in, in the place I am at the minute. Um, I I suppose like you know last year was a was a long enough year for me. Um, you know I missed a good bit of the league, 
uh, then came into the championship with not the whole point, a whole lot of training done, but was happy enough in ways. Uh, and obviously went into the club scene and the club scene went on very long and, you know, we, we made a country final that hasn't been played yet. So it, it was a long season. Then you're going to re, into pre-season again on your own. So but I think I'd put, I, I ticked a lot of boxes early on when I could do the, the small things, you know, when you had time to do them. Uh, and I'm benefiting from that now at the minute because the body feels good, but that's down to the credit of, you know, Kes Miller, s and coach, and we have a very good medical team in fairness who, you know, we're, we're constantly on the phone, constantly uh, touching base, and it's either maybe, yes, let's push it on tonight, or else, no, not tonight, you're on, you're on off feet tonight, and there's very good management there, and I suppose there's good communication between us all because the level of training that it's at at the minute, you just have to be extra careful. I can imagine. It was a hamstring off the bone, was it? Yeah, uh, ruptured my hamstring off the bone in July 2016. Um, had a surgery here in Cork, and then obviously I did 13 months rehab. And Jesus, my first game properly back. I played 20 minutes two weeks before it, and first game back about 15 minutes in. I had a reoccurrence of the same injury in the same area, and uh, I just did a bit of research and I, I found um, Faris Haddad in the Prof Haddad in, in London, who would you know. Obviously, he's he operated on a lot of um, top professional athletes in rugby and soccer and stuff. And, you know, I did my research well, and he was the guy I needed to go out. And thankfully, he, he he had full confidence. He get me back playing, and here we are. So, you no, know, it's it, it's a it's a funny one to be honest. Like I know whenever I do interviews, it's always mentioned and stuff like that. But uh, you know, it's only when it's taken away from you and something you thought was might be over. You, you know, you're only grateful to play it again and. Just I just can't wait for a championship and play ball at the, at the at the top level. To be honest with you, like you know, I think that people's ears are pricked when they hear about that particular injury because obviously it ended Paul O'Connell's career. So it's it's right up there with the the cruciate ligament injuries as as, as the really terrible ones. But it's it's great to hear that the body's going so well. You, you look at some of the other core forwards down through recent years, like Colm O'Neill, Kieran Sheehan as well. It's almost like there's a hex placed over ye at, at times, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, it's a funny one. You know, I, I know it's part and part, parcel of, of playing, like injuries and stuff like that, but we do get crucified, like, you know, over the last few years. Like, we had Kev Crowley's out with the last year with his shoulder. Um, Neymar Donovan did cruise shit. You've killed the Hanlon and Aidan Brown this year. Um, but, like, you know, <laughs> we don't make excuses. Look, it is. It's next man up and you get in. But the level of training at the minute, that, look, you see Bill O'Connor and a lot more with serious injuries around the country as well. Like, just us. Um, but um, look, it's was the strength of the character is like you know you see what Colin came back from with three injuries, three cruciate injuries. Here on, um, you know after a cruciate, you know to play at the highest level in Ireland and go on to play professional. Um, it just shows the the person they are really like you know, and it's it's, it's how you bounce back from the injuries really with define the character you are like you know. But they obviously do make you make mentally stronger as well from what you go through, you know from you know training sessions on your own to you know, being outside the bubble of Cork football and whatnot. So, you know, in a very strange way, it makes you a better person, if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, it does. Really interesting. Um, just a reminder, you've been uh, listening to Brian Hurley over the last little while. And today as Cork GA sponsor, Sports Direct unveiled its Born to Play campaign for the championship. Just to let you know that Sports Direct is calling on parents of newborn babies from across the Rebel County to register their baby's name to be in with a chance of featuring on Cork GA's very own Walk of Fame around Parky Cueve and receive a Cork GEA kit. The Steps to Greatness celebrates all newborn babies in Cork in, who were born in the summer of 2021 who, like the greats, have gone before them, are born to play. Parents can register online and the names will be on display outside Parky Cueve ahead of Cork's championship openers this season. Uh, Brian, great to hear from you. Great to hear that the body's doing well. Very best of luck for the next couple of months. Thanks a million. Thanks very much, Ron. Appreciate it.